for future Q This is LTV. Inside Lemonster is brought to you in part through the generous support of N.P. Crowley Company Incorporated and by DeCarolis Insurance Agency Incorporated, DeCarolisInsuranceAgency.com and by Enterprise Bank. Enterprise Bank, create success, EnterpriseBanking.com. Well, hello and welcome to Inside Lemonster. My name is Dean Mazzarella, Mayor for the City, and happy to uh, have you with us today, whether you're watching us live on a Thursday afternoon at 4 o'clock, or maybe catch us later on on one of the repeats. And, uh, but either way, we try to bring you all the information you need to know about your city. And uh, we're going to go to the phones, because I told Art, Ad, Art had a, a bit of a tough end to the, to the uh, month of June. So I told Art that the month that June is the month of art. Let's check in with art and see how we're doing with my prediction. Well, that's one heck of a holiday if it is. Uh, it's good. See? It's good. Yeah, I told you. You were on the money. I got a couple of quick things that uh, I think a, not only is it a strategy that will make you safer and feel safer, it will make other people safer. Coming up today... Back and forth on Route 13 from from uh, North Lamester to Central Street area, and naturally, as everyone knows, that Route 13 is under heavy construction, and is I think at minimum three gentlemen, retired Lamester PDs, doing the traffic control, and four at sometimes. And you yep. imagine standing in the middle of that road, mm. kind of weather. I mean, I, I did it with cars stopped as a crossing guard, and I almost had to run over. But my point is, that particular quarter mile of street, I think, is the most dangerous in terms of access for emergency vehicles, be mm -hmm. it Engine 3 coming out of the fire station, ambulances from towns in Lunenburg, Lumminster, going to the hospital and or coming from downtown to pick someone up in North Lomaster, we need to give them room. And it's difficult now because of what's oh, going on. You. So what I noticed was, and it worked for me the other day with two police cruisers, don't get up on the car in front of you's bumper. Give yourself room to be able to pull off to the curb to open up a lane for that vehicle going to the emergency. And I think that's just as important as it is when you're walking out of market basket and you're two inches from all the cars that are parked, someone's going to back up, and they're not going to see you if you're hugging their car like that, especially at an angle. Yep. I agree. And uh, hats off to those guys. Today, traffic was stopped for maybe a minute to allow a big excavator to turn and do some work. So they had a backup from Baker Cadillac. I'm trying to figure it out now. I'm sorry. From the end, if you're coming from downtown Lemister, the backup was from the lights to where you bang a right to go to Sears Town, all the way up to the Pete's Coffee Shop area. Wow. But once they got done that quick dig, those guys come out and they they waved us through. They cleaned that whole area out in under a minute. They're doing an exceptional job. And boy, I'll tell you what, I am making a promise to myself when I go out, especially during the afternoon when the sun is high, if I'm going that way, I'm bringing a couple of bottles of cold water. I've done that with Mr. Benghazi, right, bud? And you could see he appreciated oh, it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was can't uh, just say, well, I'll be back in a half an hour. I, I was... Uh, pavement 
all day long. It's amazing. Stamina, that's what it is. And I appreciate it. I know a lot of other people appreciate it. I was so, yeah. uh, 495 south today. And um, right at 495 going north, it must have been the Route 4 going, so the Route 4 bridge, a Pepsi truck. So I don't know how. It hit the bridge. So underneath, so on 495, the bridge going over 495, I think it was Route 4 or 110. I think it was Route 4. And, um, mm -hmm. and the Pepsi truck was just crushed, and traffic was miles. But my question was, these trailers are built certain sizes. The only thing I can think of is somehow or another, he pulled into the breakdown lane. And when he did, it's just enough to catch the bridge. So in other words, maybe the pavement is, is crowned, or maybe it crowns up. Yep. That's the only, because tractor trail, there must be thousands of them that drive under that bridge every day. This is a standard size tractor trail, 50 feet or whatever it was, standard yep. height. It had Pepsi written all over it, so it's been under almost a, probably every bridge in Massachusetts. And somehow, he must have just caught either, you know, it doesn't take much, but the only thing I could think of is when they resurfaced it, it's, it's, uh, because you watch those tractor trails, they barely miss the bridge when they go they under. They didn't dig down enough, I don't think. That's what That's I what think happened. Like. Because how could they hit the bridge? Yeah. I, I, and it's, you know, like you said, I mean, every day, and they, those guys, once they get booking on those trucks, they are moving. And, well, it, you know, if they, they see move. they're not going to fit, it's too late. They're uh, not going to stop that truck. It just, it buckled it. The bridge doesn't move. The truck just buckled. And, yeah. I, and so I'll be curious to see on the news. I'm sure it's going to be on the news. But I'll be curious because I, I, I got to think it has, has to have something to do with the fact that he was, it, it didn't happen in the, one of the regular lanes. It looked like he was pulled to the, to the far right, unless that's where he ended up. Anyway, I just you know, And one more thing. I had a passenger in the car today. Yes. And that passenger mouth was open because she was so impressed with how beautiful downtown, the, the, the people that take care of those flowers and the way they put together the arrangements in the hanging baskets, it's absolutely gorgeous. Wonderful job by everybody. Well, we, we, we stand up and be proud. This city has grown and not only has it grown in size, it's grown in, in class. And uh, it really shows. We got a beautiful downtown. Yes. We don't need murals to make it look nice. No. It's a nice, antique ish looking city. New and England. It's well kept and well maintained and well run. Old historic I'm New running England. Not anything special. I just feel that. I really do. Good. Thank and you. I, I, so I'm pro Lemister, I tell you. And I play golf with guys, and they comment all the time. Good. You know, it's, it's nice. We'll pass, on, we'll pass it on to the team. I will. Please do. And yes. thank you for the concerns about the the, uh, the old left-footed kicker here. Yeah. I told you. Uh, everything's good now. Everything's G good. Now, July. I could only make the, the best part of my golf game is gone. The putting was my best asset. That's gone. Dr driving and, and pitching was me mediocre. Now they're good. See? i got to find a, a cure for that. This is the month of our... July, mark my words. The whole month, that's right. I would get that's down right. to the casino any way you can. And oh, I also got another. Uh, I got an email from my cousin in Pennsylvania that did the, the background check on our family. He's got more stuff coming. Once all I right. get it all together, I'm going to bring it down to you. All right, I love it. You know, and I, I, no one has to bow. The, the founding fathers. No, I know. Those I commend. I know. It's it's. I'm humbled by it. <laughs> Having said that, you have a good day and great weather for the recreation department. I'm sure they're busy. Yes, the pools, the and splash thank parks. thank them for all they do. Yes, absolutely. That was not asked to do either. See you later. See you later. Thank you, Art. That was Art from the Art Report. July is the month of Art. Taking a short break, and then we are coming back with Nick Ambrosi. He's the new... Recreation Department Director, and we get a chance to meet him and talk with him and, 
And uh, yeah, uh, Art was right. The uh, parks are busy, the pools are busy, the playgrounds are busy. It's that time of year. We'll be right back. Yeah, we're back here at Inside Lemonster. Thanks for watching. 978-534-1626 is the number to call here. Uh, interesting little piece. Uh, Boys and Girls Club put this little booklet together. I don't know if you saw it, but it did a really nice job. It says, come alive outside, 2022 summer passport, an, an adventure guide for Lemonster, Fitchburg, and Gardner. And, and they have a, a little kind of scavenger hunt inside. Yep. Uh, take a hike, choose a park. Write the name of the trail that you hiked on. If the trail has no name, name it. Make your own name. Very creative. Very nice. And uh, you can pick these up. We have plenty of them at City Hall. And at the Recreation Office. And at the Recreation Department as well. I uh, guess right now, for the first time, <laughs> here on uh, Inside Lominster and in the city is Nick Abruzzi. And he's the uh, new Recreation Department Director. Welcome aboard. Thank you very much. Thanks for having and, me. And uh, you've got an extensive record, and, and you've Good. been in recreation pretty much all your your uh, your life one way or another just under 30 years 30 yeah. years yeah. 20 almost 25 in Waltham and about five with the YMCA oh that's cool yeah and YMCA's and boys and girls clubs yeah busy summer here uh, especially where uh, everyone has kind of stepped up you know stepped up mm -hmm. offering programs where they can where yep. they can get help absolutely and um, it's at the the Spanish American Center boys and girls club uh, the schools recreation department and the uh, um, and uh, the library yep. have just, I mean, there's something. Through the roof, yeah. Yeah, it, it, you know, everywhere for everybody, for every age every, group. Yeah, every and, age group. And yep. that's a good thing. Yep. So um, you got, yeah, quite a bit of experience. You worked in, uh, uh, you were the director of Parks and Recreation in Waltham. Waltham, yep, Jeanette and, McCarthy. Yeah, and you were assistant in, in Waltham for, from 98 to 2016. Yep. But, they, boy, they've got, they've had some big projects going on a out there. A lot of big projects. Yeah, we're very lucky. A lot of funding from the mayor was really nice. And um, Well, they got some money out there. They've got all that development along 128 yep, and yeah. everywhere, pretty much. Yep. Not just there. A lot of good resources. Oh, that's interesting, huh? Mrs. Trump, Mrs. the original Mrs. Trump passed away. Uh, oh. I didn't know that. Huh. She was only 70-something. She, oh, uh, she had only be How old was President Trump's? first wife. Look it up. Yeah, she probably only was 70 something. She was yeah, can't be that. Yeah, young can't lady. Be that much older. Yeah. Well, that's too bad. Um, yeah, and they, they've got, you know, they got all that development there. They got money to spend. Well, yeah, and, a lot of uh, um, CDBG uh, grants that they take advantage of. Right. And, you know, we're very lucky we built a lot in especially the last 10 years. It's yeah. been great. So a lot of playgrounds, we benefited from the money from spray parks, splash pads, yeah. uh, playgrounds. Uh, field complexes. I mean, we've been very lucky, so. Yeah, good. And so you took over. Well, I mean, Judy's still there. She's retiring she is soon. On the 29th. I'm 29th? so excited for her. Yeah. And she's been here, I think, as long as me. 28 years, I think. Yeah. yeah. She's, I think, the first year I was here, and we started a search committee, and then we, we hired her. And uh, yeah, she's been ever, you know, yep. here ever since. She yep. knows all the trails. Yep. And, yep. I've yeah. learned a lot just in, I think, I've under just a little over two weeks. And yeah. you know, I've never, I'd never met her before. So. Right. 
It's been great to meet her. There's a lot. Really excited for her. So what are the things you'd like to do? I mean, in the city, you um, see, we have, I, I, I always say, had I known yep. that these splash pucks were that popular, you know, it's funny. I would have had a hundred of them. In Waltham, uh, originally we had wading pools, which yep. had no filtration. I remember those. Arlington had yep. them. Yeah, we had we had. It nine was a of thing them. around yeah, that area. We had nine of them, and they just they, were, they didn't meet any state yep. sanitary code. Right. So we ended up doing a, a plan to bring in splash pads to replace all of them one by one. The goal is to get four of them and regionalize them yep. around the city. And they became so popular that we, when I left, there was 13 of them. 13 so, of them. 13. Wow. I mean, it's, it's just great. It's so much safer for the kids. And, um, you know, it's just something every age group, you know, adults are in there. You know, they work yeah. out, then they run in and, you know, cool, cool off. off. Yep. So they're, they're definitely. How cool. Yeah, they're, they're one of those things that started out, and I think people thought it might be a trend, but it, it, it's uh, definitely sustained. And they're so. getting more, you know, sophisticated definitely. and they have more amenities yep. and everything. Absolutely. It keeps the, the kids. It's great. They keep going. Yep. They're out there. They keep, it's clean water. They're having fun. They're playing with other kids. Uh, it, it, you can great. be creative there. Yep. I mean, it's just it's just a, a, a wonderful thing. 978-534-1626 if you have any questions at all. Uh, American Heart Association, CPS, CPR first aid instructor. Yep. Yep. Uh, American Red Cross Community first aid and safety instructor. Lifeguard training, certified pool operator. Mm -hmm. And personal trainer and special Olympic volunteer. Yes. Which is big around here, the Special Olympics. Uh, yeah, and I hope that's something that we can expand upon. I think it's a, a wonderful program we've worked with in the past. And I volunteered years and years ago, but yeah. uh, it's just a great organization. So, That's good. So what do you see here? I mean, anything that you'd, you'd like to do here, you know, kind uh, of passing the torch? Really excited, you know, just to, meeting people has been great the last two weeks. Yeah. And seeing the, I visited the facilities and um, summer programs, like you said, are in full swing. So... How are it's they going so far? Very, this, very good. Yeah, the pool's good. very, very popular. We started off having a difficult time trying to hire people. Yes. Yeah, no, the staff, has, look like staff has been great. We yeah. had, you know, uh, week-long training, and uh, the, our office is, is phenomenal, and uh, Lisa's done a great job organizing, and um, so we're very lucky from that standpoint. But the yeah, summer's have so a great far, team. We really do, and summer's been, uh, been, been good. It's been busy, um, and uh, the pool's been... Uh, very consistent with the numbers, mm. and we have uh, some programs that, that go there twice a week, and then we have the public. So um, looking to definitely expand next year on swim lessons, getting the swim lessons back. Yeah. Um, love to see you know more programming for people of all ages that we're going to try to implement in the fall. Um, and then love to see some more development of like the splash pads or um, you know improvements to any of the parks that, yeah. that, that we could. Uh, I mean, we've come a long way. Barrett oh, Park no, is no, just yeah. beautiful. Oh, my and, God, it's and, absolutely And for a while, it was just kind of, I don't know, it just left to its original state, which wasn't bad at yep. all. Yeah. Because there's something to be said. If you go to Walden Park or Pond and yep. everything, you know, they make modifications in amenity, you know, in, in, in those amenities so that they have, you know, bathrooms and a gift shop, yep. which helps make money. Yep. But it's pretty much left to the original habitat. Yep. yep. And, um, but over time, there's been improvements made. And, and uh, uh, unfortunately, we've, all the studies and everything we've been down there, done down there, we haven't. I think we opened, the first year I was here, we opened for two months. Yep. We opened the water. We met the standards of the state. Yep. And then after that, yep. there just wasn't enough water coming in. Right. We had studies showing that there's, there's springs underneath, underneath but yeah. something's covering out. Right. So, I mean, it's just a study after study. Yep. So yep. we're like, well, we can't just spend a million dollars and not know if it's, it's going to work or right. not. You know? Right. It's, I mean, it's just, when I was interviewing, I came out and looked at the, uh, at the facility, and I was just blown away by how beautiful it was. So... And it's um, peaceful. It, it is, and that's the other nice thing about not using it for other other reasons. Right. It's really a, right. a meditative space for people to get away, and you know, it's it's really really a uh, nice passive recreation opportunity for people. So, what else do you see around here that maybe you've seen in other areas that you think you'd like to give it a chance? Some um, things work. You try things. Yeah. Sometimes they're successful, and other times, yeah, yeah throw you know. a lot of things out there for people, and you know, really let the public decide, and you know, uh, questionnaires and survey people so that they have uh, impact on decision making and. Um, but sports programs, I'm a, I'm a huge sports uh, fanatic in every sport. Um, so I'd love to see more sport programs brought in uh, for the youth. Um, and then I think just generally, you know, hitting all age groups with a lot of uh, different diverse programming that we could offer. They had a mount, mountain biking program yes. from June 27th to July 1st. How'd that go? So far, yeah, so far it's going good. It's, yeah. yeah, it's uh, something that we've expanded now. Um, we're moving on with some more of that. Um, very popular. Um, all the programs. We have um, summer programs going on um, right now at Northwest, and we also have it obviously at Barrett Park. Um, 
And then in the next couple of weeks, we'll, we'll be kicking with a lot of the sports programs, the multi-sport programs the that kids we do. Love it. The Osowski basketball. Yeah. Um, uh, that's a big clinic, deal. Which is great. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm really looking forward to getting to know a lot of those people that, you know, put that on. Right. So it's exciting. That's good. 978-534-1626. And uh, you, you got your summer, spring, summer bro brochure here. Yep. And... Uh, you have another one coming up probably in the fall. We have a fall one we're working on right now. Uh, yep. Tennis in the parks. Uh, there's just, there's, there is really something for everybody to do here. Top Secret Science and Math, 17th Annual Memorial Markowski, Basketball Clinic, Fast Athletic Mini Sports Program. So you have something in here for, for, for everybody. everybody. Yeah, and we're just looking to expand on that and, um, you know, just develop as many opportunities as you can for all abilities and all backgrounds. Get and kids moving. Get, keep them And active. they will. If you find the right thing for yep. them to, to, to do, they will. Yep. Now, re where are you originally from? I grew up in Newton. Newton. And uh, moved to Milford. Well, got married, moved to Mansfield, then moved to Milford in 2000. So we've been there ever since. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons I started looking for positions. My wife and I are looking at downsizing and moving to a different area. Mm -hmm. um, and when this came up, I said this would be a really nice place to investigate. So. Yeah. Oh, so that's how it all came. People have been asking, why did you change after <laughs> so long? And I said, it's just, it's a long story. Yeah, and, and obviously Waltham has a bigger budget. Yep, yep. Uh, you probably that's had actually, And that's actually part of the... Um, the challenge. The challenge. You know, I feel good about that. Yeah. And I'm excited for that, so... Because you there you got, you know, you got staff, There's right? a lot of resources, a bigger staff. Yep. equipment and... Yep. But what, what um, I've seen so far in Lemons, I mean, someone, Art, I think it was Art on the phone, um, made reference to downtown and like it was it's stunning and mm. you know to see the work that they do to put the flowers in uh, is just the pride you can feel that's what that's what um, really got me interested in coming here is in my interview I actually told the panel that I attended a football game a couple of years ago um, and saw the energy in the in the pride in the community yeah, people are they're yeah. proud to say yep. you know I got a text la late last night from somebody who uh, saw something I posted and said you know I live in St. Paul Minnesota, and I used to live in Lemonsta, and so, you know, many times, I'll look right now, but many times the, the very people that are watching or watching our morning briefings are the same very people who, um, who are, are, who are who used to live here, and, uh, you know, because work or the, something took them away, away from somewhere. the area, yep. and um, they want to stay in touch, yeah. and they're very proud it's to be able to, you know, I, I'm from Lemonsta, yep. I know, I, no, I think everywhere I go, somebody runs up and says, I used to live there, yeah. and I've brought up there. And most of the time, it's work that takes people yep. away. Yep. A lot of these companies transferred people out, or they merged or closed. Right. They, you know, something that took these people out of the right. area. Well, as a, as a visiting football fan, like, I felt it. And that was mm. probably 10 years ago, 8 years ago. And, you know, when the, when the opportunity came up, I just that's exactly what I thought of. was like, just feeling that. Bingo. Being, being right? at Doyle Field and just feeling the energy and the pride in the community was something I really wanted to look into. So. And we, we got it the hard way. There wasn't a whole lot of money yep. kicking around. Yep. So a lot of the things that got done, we had the DPW workers come and help. Uh, Doyle Field was, was obviously money that, you know, the city put into it. But a lot of businesses in town contributed. Yep. Yep. So it's, you still have... You know, people that live here that own businesses here. In fact, the vast amount of businesses that are owned, uh, that are here are owned by local people. Right. Yep. You know, and so. that's pride. That's part of the community. Yeah. So, yep. Anything else? Do we miss any? I'll, I just I wanted to do a quick introduction yeah. no, for you. Just excited Welcome to, to come in anytime and just. Oh, that's great. Uh, no, excited about the the things we talked about yeah. and you know projects we'd like to um, get moving. You know, some of the capital projects that we're working on. We're excited about those, and those will be coming soon. Um, and then just moving forward with you know future development. Yeah, we got a dam to repair up dam. there. We There's have the skate park, skateboard skate park, park we're that'll be on. starting in August. Yep. So then we got the playground at Barrett that we're going to be going up to yep. bed soon. That's with. right. So we got a lot going on already, which yeah. is which is good. So well, thanks a million for coming on. Thank you for having me. It's uh, it's good. And and, and again, Judy, 28 years yep. down at the rec department. Uh, was just you know again, we don't have huge staff, yep. so a lot of that stuff is yep. Got to get down, and you're using part time help and the you know, seasonal help, as we call it. Yep. So she's done a, a great job, yep. as yep. they say. Absolutely. All right, we're taking a short break. You're watching Inside Limits. My name is Dean Mazzarella, mayor for the city, and our phone number is 978 534 1626. And we'll be right back with more.
That's us. We're back here at Inside Lumberstone. I'm chewing on a mint. My, uh, my lips were sticking. <laughs> I have a little bit of water here. Yes, we got two good pieces right here. Oh, you just saw a clip. The uh, team here at LTV are out there touring all the trails in the city. Um, you know, I, I think we've been on most of the trail. No, I'm not sure. I know, like, I haven't been to the top of um, South Manusnock Hill. Is it South Manusnock Hill that looks over like the Kmart Plaza? There's that one, if you go to the end of West Street, you go all the way up, and um, there's a beautiful view from there. And it's North Manusnock Hill, and that kind of looks out towards like the Princeton end. And um, not, you know, I mean, it's not for everybody, but if you can get out there sometime, take the kids, grandkids, or whatever, you will be amazed. And, uh, but anyway, two good journals here, uh, one put out by the um, Boys and Girls Club and the other one by the Rec Department. And the uh, one with the uh, uh, Boys and Girls Club is very interactive, lots of pictures, prizes, amazing artwork, places you can go to look at artwork. Carla, welcome to the show. Hi, do you know? I think it's Crystal. How are you? Good. I'm good. How I about... Just, I've, uh, I feel a little better now. Oh, good. Well, you take your time. Right? I just, so, next, so next week I'll go back to the program and back in Hannaford. Oh, you are? Yeah. Okay, good. I don't no. have the virus. I'm negative. Good. But I'll talk to you soon, buddy. All right. We'll talk to you later, Crystal. Take care, buddy. All Bye-bye. Right. Bye. We've got to make sure our friends are healthy and they're staying staying good, right? Making sure they feel good. About a half hour left to go here. I didn't say Lemonster. Lemonster. Did you hear that? Lemonster. It's Lemonster. Did you know that on this day of history, 1798, was the first direct U.S. federal tax on states? So I suspect that it's all been downhill from there, you guys. Did I blame it on that first, on the anniversary today of the first direct United States federal tax? They put it on dwellings, land, and slaves. 1845, the first postmaster stamp issued. It's the first time they issued stamps. Gold is discovered in Montana, the first commercial airplane flight in Hawaii. Didn't know that. First color telecast of a sporting event. You know what it was? It was a baseball game, wasn't it? I thought so, but apparently this source said it was a horse race. Horse race. That does make sense, because um, have you heard the story about how film was invented? No. Uh, two rich guys wanted to settle a bet, so they got a bunch of cameras to photograph how a horse runs. And when you looked at the, cam the pictures in sequence, you know, that, that's the legend of the first film strip. Oh, because they had to put them picture, 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 right? Exactly. I like it. Even if it's not true, I like it. Horse races making history all the time. You know, horse racing used to be so much bigger of a sport. And I think it's because it was new to television. And for people that couldn't get to the track to actually watch the, um, the horse racing, uh, I remember my father used to watch it pretty often. And it was exciting, like exciting. Like you, you didn't even know what, and, and usually you picked a horse based on the name of the horse. You didn't really know much about the horse, but it might have said, you know, horse with a green collar, uh, horse out of the gate, something, right? Like naming a boat. Yeah, they have fun names. Mm. And that's generally what People don't know very much about it. They didn't, like, get the race guide and study it to see, you know, anything about the horse. It was all about the name of the horse. But interesting. I like that. And then it was the, uh, the Who that began their U.S. tour opening for Hermit's Hermits, 1967. Imagine that. Hermit's Hermits. Did you guys ever hear of Hermit's Hermits? Uh, no, that's, that's new for me. It's saying, Henry VIII, I am, I am. 
Henry the Eighth, I am, I am. I have heard that one. Yeah, that was Hermit's Hermits. They're probably like 80 now. Epcot Center. They went to uh, the state of Florida to get plans, and that's when they announced it. So still pre pretty new, Epcot. It's evolved, and they've done renovations, but it's 1975. Then the big one, 1983, Mario Brothers is the first, is first relief by, released by Nintendo in Japan about an Italian-American plumber, Mario. He's still popular. Some fun Mario trivia for you, Dean. Do you know Mario's last name? Um, no. It's Mario. His Mario Mario. Mario Mario. <laughs> what a trick they played on him. Well, you see, it's hard. You know, it, it's, like, it's like anything else. You have Mario Brothers. You don't know how sustainable that is. But yet, I, I, I see mothers, they'll, you know, mom will bring a kid. Okay, you can pick any toy you want. It's your birthday. And many times, they run after Mario because he's very colorful, right? He's got the brand down, you know? Yeah. And, and that was 1983, Mario Brothers first introduced Mario. And he's still going strong. Uh, most appearances of one character in a game, yeah. It's like 250 or something. In that game? Well, Mario's appearances in any game. Oh, okay. Up to like 250. Wow. We have two great events to celebrate. Twin Cities Rail Trail. So we opened it, but we never did like the official, you know, bringing all the state people and everybody and get the two cities together. So on June 29th, um, at 9 o'clock, park over at Doyle Field, and we'll, we'll show you where to go after that onto the trail. And then there's a combined event. It's uh, Starburst this, this year, but it's also going to commemorate the opening of the rail trail. So you can follow um, pretty much anywhere, but my morning briefings will have updates as we go. Yeah, Ivana Trump, ex-wife of Donald Trump, dies at 73. That's young. I wonder if they say what was wrong with her. That's too bad. My cohort here in the office says uh, it was ruled a heart attack. Oh, so she wasn't ill. Apparently not. 73 years old. That's too bad. Let's see. National Night Out coming on. Is that the slide we're on? Yeah, there we go. I know it's a small writing. We combined National Night Out and Kids Day. They were both big events, but they were, they were right on top of each other. I got my remote now. You guys were doing it for me. <laughs> you look different with short hair. You look, uh, you look famous. Thank you. Does, Thank your, you. does your wife like your short hair? No. Really? Let's, let's, uh, let's say this about that. It was nothing wrong either way. It's just you, you look more um, like you've, you've conformed to society. It was long overdue. Is that a pun? <laughs> no. But you know what I'm saying about conforming to, to society? You know, you, you got a mortgage, you know, car loan, you know, that stuff. It's all serious from here on the way in. <laughs> all right, so, uh, we, you know, both were big events, and uh, we decided to combine the events because they were big and they were right near each other, and it used to be done by someone, uh, another uh, agency used to do National Light Out. It went so well, we decided to do it and said, let's just keep it together. Then you see uh, Farmer's Market the first Saturday in every month. I can't wait because, like, Go Farm has fish. Yeah, fish. Has, uh, do you ever eat smoked fish? Nothing like it. Nothing like oh, it. Oh, just this good, good. Smoked fish. You gotta try it sometime. It's not that pop. You can get it at stores around here, but it's, it's, uh, it, it's not popular. 
smoked fish, but it's good. And um, so anyway, farmer's market, I'm looking forward to it because, uh, well, you know, the first tomato I saw somebody the other day posted corn over at Go Farm. We have strawberries. And uh, I think this year we'll do it again where I spend the whole week eating nothing unless it came or was raised or grown here in this area. And I learned a lot, too, about it. So, uh, you know, there's the, obviously you can do a lot of it right here in Lumberster, but I, I remember going to, like, uh, Bob's Turkey and getting turkey, which is really good. And then I went to a place in towns, and I forget what I got there, but in this area, you literally could eat. Every night of the week, you could eat, uh, you know, supper, uh, with everything made, with all of the contents right here from, from Lemonster. 436 here at Inside Lemonster. My name is Dean Mazzarello, Mayor. I want to thank our sponsors for uh, every week sponsoring this show. Uh, without them, well, you know, it gives us a little extra money to enhance what we do here at Inside Lemonster. Maintenance on equipment, new equipment. As you know, they put up this beautiful brand new building. And very few access television cable companies actually can do it because, well, they spend their money other places, right? Here, we give good quality programming, plus uh, they, you know, were able to salt a little money aside, a little bit here, a little bit there, so they could, uh, you know, get us into this building. So, good news. Uh, then, the Food Truck Festival, oh, Lemus the Farmer's Market, uh, the 6th of August, 27th is Starburst, uh, Fireworks and then the right gumbo. September 3rd is Lumberster Farmers Market again. September 9th is the Food Truck Festival. Dining Under the Stars, September 13th. Citywide Yard Sale is the 17th. Johnny Appleseed Festival, 24th. And then, then we kick into a whole full slate of things for the month of October. <clears throat> Rick Orley, if you didn't know him, just a remarkable man. He was our veterans director, a veteran himself, did a wonderful job. He was a uh, team player, just a wonderful, wonderful person. Uh, he passed away uh, last month, two months ago, somewhere in between a month and two months ago, and they have a celebration of life. All are invited, 100 West Street tomorrow, uh, July 15th at 2 p.m. And I just can't even picture the fact that y y I, I, it's, sometimes it's just hard to to imagine. Uh, he was 80 or close to it, but you would never know. And uh, sharp as anything. Um, just a good guy and a wonderful advocate for, for veterans. Hey, they got this thing called the Mott Evening Ride Service. So if you know, maybe you have a daughter, granddaughter, maybe you're working part-time somewhere, and you need a ride. And it's, it gets expensive. You start calling these Uber people, taxis and all of that. It gets expensive. So the ride share is a good program to pick you up in a van anywhere in this area, really, and uh, two bucks. And you can call 800-922-5636, option five. Just a couple of clicks on the phone, and you're in. And uh, two bucks, two bucks. It isn't worth owning a car. All right, tonight's the big concert. You know, they've been doing a concert there every Thursday night. Well, tonight is the Mark Marquis and Friends concert. Scott Babineau, who has, I think it's his birthday tonight. Lizzie Marquis, Mark Dion, Jimmy Morrill, and Dave Bergeron. Uh, tonight at Carter Park. This is a once, they only do this concert once a year here in the summer. You don't want to miss it. Mark Marquis and friends, some of the best musicians around. Um, 7 o'clock tonight, Carter Park. And when I say tonight, I mean tonight, which is July 14th. And Lemus Colonial Band already had their first concert. They had it at City Hall because it rained. If it ever rains and you go to City and you go to Carter Park and it's raining, or weather looks like it's going to be bad, they still perform right over at... Um, City Hall, if it rains. And we thank them for that. In the meantime, they perform. The weather's going to be good over at Carter Park. They come in at 7.30. There's so many members of the band, and they don't all get home at 6 o'clock at night. Some have to travel here. Some work outside the area. So um, 
It's a 7.30 start time down at Carter Park. We'll take a short break. You guys got a short break back there? If you don't, I can keep going. Uh, yeah, we can give you more. Uh, I just need some breaks. drink. I need some drink time. And then we'll come back and talk about the, uh, the Woo Sox. How's that? Right. Whenever you're ready, we'll take a break, and we're coming right back at LTV. Beautiful, beautiful Doyle Field. Um, so much going on, so many construction projects. Uh, I don't know if you've had a chance to go by Water Tower Plaza. Um, well, first of all, they've uh, fenced off the old Shaw's supermarket. But they've also asked that we not sort of share what's going there. Mm -hmm. um, so people keep asking, and I just kind of wonder, and let me go to the, the technicians here and ask them, a younger generation, do you think this is all just part of the hype? So they say, so you know something's coming there and there's rumors as to what's coming there, but then they don't answer either way. Do you think it's all part of the hype? So are they saying, you know, are they not confirming that anything is going there? No, they're just saying something's going there, but they won't say what. Oh, that could that might be a, a hype thing. That scares me. Well, I mean, it's good, whatever it is. I mean, I think people could figure it out. It's something to do with food and shopping and supermarket kind of thing. So um, you can narrow it down, I guess. Yeah, the only thing we know it's not is another Shaw's. This is true. This is true. Um, well, it's not a lot of things. It's not a casino or anything like that. Anyway. Oh, that's true, yeah. Yeah. So, but we do know is something's going there, and I just wonder if it's part of the hype. But either way, we don't. Our standard policy in the city of Lumberston is that we say to businesses, if you want to tell somebody that you're coming somewhere. Now, once you do the grand opening, it's public information, and obviously we, you know, publicize it and tell people we're having a grand opening. Prior to that, our policy is, if you want to announce it, you go ahead. Now, some companies come back to us and said, hey, can you announce it? You know the people, the players, the media, and everybody else around here. Could you announce, um, you know, can you tell people what's going on around here? Yeah, we'll tell them. We'll tell them. But if they're looking for, if, um, you know, if they're looking for to keep it confidential, then we'll do, we'll do that. 978-534-1626. Give us a call here at Inside Lemons if you'd like. Yes, that project is huge out front. Uh, you can see now where they're moving the telephone poles, and um, it's amazing. It's, it's, that road is going to be wider. Um, you won't pull out from CVS or Water Tower Plaza and almost be in that head-on position look. Um, let me just look at something. I just want to see if they talk about that accident on 495 today. Let's look. 495 accident. Today. Uh, no, that wouldn't be it. That's a cruiser. 
Um, doesn't say. Hmm. I don't know. What's the date today? No. 14th today. Yeah. Nope. Andover? Nope. It would have been near Chelmsford. Nothing. Okay. Well, anyway, I can just tell you it's a good size accident. All right, let's move on because the Lemons the Colonial Band. We are a music town and plenty of it. Lemons the Colonial Band, 113th consecutive free session of music. Free. Costs you nothing. Tuesday evenings. That's every Tuesday at 730. If we have bad weather, just come to City Hall. We'll be there. July 12th, 19th, 26th, 2nd, and 9th. And they also, believe it or not, talk about good planning. They've already picked their date for their annual holiday concert. It's going to be December 11th. Uh, it's a Sunday at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So they just had their concert in June. They'll start almost right away rehearsing for the Christmas season. All right, if you haven't signed up yet, uh, you got till, uh, well, I don't know when you got till. Let's see what it says. Um, Woo Sox, Lemons Today, July 24th. They say that we've only signed up, let's see, 115 people. I don't believe it. Yeah, that's what they say. I don't believe it. It's a big area. Baseball's big. We have a lot of, you know, regular fans down there that go there religiously. Um, Okay. That's coming up July 24th. You just go to woosocks.com. They make it really easy to um, register. And uh, they're claiming that Auburn has 546 people that went to the game. Boylston at 507 and 362 at Holden. And they're trying to say, Lemons has only got 100 and uh, print small. 158 people register for the game. No, I don't think so. Starburst, if you're watching, you haven't watched our morning briefings, we talk a lot about it. Bob Healy did an exceptional job, an exquisite job, beautiful job, um, putting together Starburst and the Starburst Symphony, and just did a great job. This year, you know, he just decided um, he had done his part, and um, everything was going well, and decided uh, it's time to move on. And uh, he did an exceptional, exceptional job, and we want to thank him. So we moved the date a little bit to get this band. It's a Lemonston based band uh, for August 27th with rain date of the 28th. It's Narada Gumbo, and they have been confirmed, so they're coming. Unless there's some major you know, weather and stuff, they're coming. So fireworks. Fireworks is part of Starburst. Just a couple minutes left here. Let's do some pictures of the weeks, guys. I don't even know what these are. Ready? Pictures of the week. Oh, there we are. In front of the hospital on Route 12. So that intersection is going to be straightened out. You're not going to be able to take a rolling right on... Uh, on North Main Street anymore. You're gonna have to, you're gonna come to a, a real intersection. Nobody can figure out who stops, who goes at that intersection. So it'll be a regular intersection now. Main Street, we just did the sidewalks over there, connecting them from uh, by um, Route 2 near Hawes Street, that little side street that comes out. And we went by uh, the Tool and Die Place and then right up to Priest Street. So sidewalks complete, and we're trying to get to as many of the main roads as we can and do some of the side roads, but move in as quickly as we can. There they are, July 12th. They had a big concert. Um, you know, it's not the same when you're not inside, but, you know, on the other hand, when it gets hot and humid, it's a, kind of a nice venue to have inside. So great job. Project number one 
under the downtown facade program. Um, this is going to be the, uh, what would you call it? Hearing aid place here, right up there on West Street. So they're gonna be our first project uh, for the new facade, facade program. I wish I were an Oscar Minor Wiener. That is what I truly wish to do. So if you remember me telling you the story about Meinhardt, who was the, the small guy in The Wizard of Oz, he was the guy that pronounces the Wicked Witch dead. So I met with him. He wanted to have supper one night. Heard I was a fan. Didn't want a whole lot of publicity. Didn't want the press around. Just kind of wanted to, you know, chat, get to know me. I get to know him kind of thing. And, and, and it worked well. We built a good relationship and a good rapport. Um, anyway, he was very proud of the fact that um, he came from, I believe, he came from the movie. I'm sorry, from Osk, from driving this thing. He drove it for 30 years, is what he told me. And he always said that if he had any issues at all, he talked to nobody, not the son, not the general manager. He talked to one person, Oscar himself. That's it. That's who he talked to. Anyway, I'd always, you know, occasionally seen this driving around, always wanted to really see it and see if I could see inside. Well, the inside is as clean and del delightful as, as the inside. It's pretty cool. Have you, uh, did you guys get on and see it at all? It was pretty neat. The inside was like, I mean, they, they travel in this thing. They travel the whole East Coast, and I think there's two of them. One goes West Coast, the other one goes East Coast. Anyway, it was fun. We had a lot of fun. Um, they have a lot of little uh, riddles, not riddles, a lot of little, what, you, what would you call them? So it would be, uh, it's nice to catch up. What do you call that? when you, you sort of add the sort of way on words. So he said, let's catch up. Uh, you know, all those little antidotes. They were funny. Nice kids. And let's see what else we got. The mall. I truly was impressed by going to the mall. I didn't, you know, I had heard some people comment on it, and I knew they were bringing in equipment and, and working down there. I had no clue. Um, by which they did all that work. They put new carpet down, the blocked off empty storefronts, painted. Uh, just what a, what a nice mall. It looks so nice down there. Now, I realize that, you know, some stores aren't still going to be there. There'll be other stores coming. It's going to take a while to, to readapt. Do you guys go to the mall? I no, you just order online probably, right? I, well, I mean, last time I was there was for my shot. Right. So, and they know that, and they know the emergence of it all. They know how this is, things are changing for malls all over the country, and they're not dumb guys. They've been in the business a long time, but it was, I think, soft. They got rid of all those middle vendors that kind of bug you, that chase you down the hall, want you to know if you buy some oil or something. I don't, just, I wasn't impressed. And, um, but they did a, a really nice job, and I want to thank Wendy for going down and get some pictures because uh, they really did, like, spruce it up. It's nice, it's safe. Uh, some of these malls, you go in, there's nobody working there. There's no maintenance people, there's nothing. Just open the doors and let people in. Not the case here. Wonderful job. And the other neat part is they had professional photographers come in to take pictures. You'll see Lummis the Fitchburg, you know, pictures of the area, things that you'll recognize. You'll see the history of that, uh, of those put down at the mall, and you will be pleasantly supplied, surprised, not supplied. Uh, you'll be pleasantly uh, surprised by the supply of photos that are down there. They're really crisp. So what they do is they use a certain, um, they use a certain um, uh, graphic. It's called, I think, vector. And the more you blow it up, you don't lose the resolution. But when you look at these pictures, they are like crisp. And they're doing some murals in there. They put new carpet. They painted the walls. Looks really, really nice. Nice job to the Hull Group, Jim Hull and the Hull Group. 
And look at Shulman Farms, uh, another batch of new trees on the way. I want to thank everybody for helping out and assisting. And uh, it's a wonderful thing, that community garden and the whole Shulman part. Occasionally you have to shut down the spray, but other than that, place is open. It belongs to you. If you're a taxpayer, you help pay for that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What a great resource it is. And it was, uh, it's Gay Pride Month, I think, right? And so we had a ceremony downtown where they hang the flag. And uh, I was unable to make it. My apologies. But uh, our staff at the police department, other departments uh, showed up, and staff from mayor's office did. And uh, we thank them. It's, uh, every year this, this event grows. And there we are for our photos of the week. There we are. Okay. All right, everybody, we're out of time here at Inside Lummis. I want to thank you for watching. Thank you to our wonderful technicians back there that are pros at what they do. And uh, we want to thank our sponsors as well. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, we're doing our morning briefing uh, on Facebook. We'll be there at 8 o'clock tomorrow because I have to be somewhere at 9.15 on the nose. And it takes, like, a good 45 minutes to get there. So I need to be on time. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching Inside Lemister. Remember, the world is run by those who show up. You need to show up. Good night. Inside Lemonster is brought to you in part through the generous support of N.P. Crowley Company Incorporated and by DeCarolis Insurance Agency Incorporated, DeCarolisInsuranceAgency.com and by Enterprise Bank. Enterprise Bank creates success, EnterpriseBanking.com. This is LTV.